In America today, on average, for every buck a man makes, women earn just 77 cents. There's one thing that just about every single job in America has in common. Dudes get paid more for doing it. Yippee! No, I shouldn't say that. It's not fair if we dudes get paid more for doing the same job. I have a daughter. I want her to be paid what she's worth. But I wonder, do we do the same jobs? Are women really discriminated against? Tonight, we separated our studio audience. Men on this side, women over here. And as they came in, we asked the people with jobs to anonymously write down how much money they earn. Then we averaged the salaries. For the women, the average turned out to be 66,000. For the men, 79,000. It's above average group for both of you. Uh, but that means that for every dollar the men make, the women only made 83 cents. Now that's more than the national average of 77 cents, so good for you, but the difference ticks people off, and it was a campaign issue last election. President Obama knows that women being paid 77 cents on the dollar for doing the same work as men isn't just unfair, it hurts families. It's time to close that gap. A dollar versus 77 cents? What horrible discrimination, says the author of Cult of Power, Sex Discrimination in Corporate America. That's Martha Burke. Martha, this gap is because of discrimination? Not all of it, but a good portion of it is absolutely because of discrimination. But why would the employer, they're all sexist? Why would they discriminate? Well, some of them don't really pay enough attention to who they're paying what, and so they don't really realize that maybe frontline management is making decisions that are not in the best interest of women. Some of them just think they can get away with it, and that goes back to the early 20th century when people paid women less because they were women and said so out loud. But you're saying that, you know, that's 100 years ago. You're saying that's still going on today? I'm saying that we still live in the legacy of it, absolutely. Uh, otherwise, why would take two jobs like uh, school cafeteria worker and school custodian? <coughs> Sorry. Why would those not be paid the same because of the same skill level, same entry level uh, type of job, but yet the custodians make more because they're predominantly male. The cafeteria ladies are just that, predominantly female, and that job pays less. The same is true with parole officers and social workers. Essentially the same kind of work. Uh, but parole officers make more money because they are predominantly male. Well, Warren Farrell once agreed with what Martha says. Here's a picture of him with Gloria Steinem when he was a young hippie who joined feminist protests. He was even on the board of the activist group now, the National Organization for Women. But then he dug deeper into the data and changed his mind. He wrote, Why Men Earn More, the startling truth behind the pay gap and what women can do about it. He, Warren, you decided it's not discrimination? What I, what I came to understand was that the pay gap is not about men and women. It's about mothers and fathers. There's 25 different work-life choices that men and women make. Every single one of men's choices leads lead to men, on average, earning more money. Every single one of women's choices leads them to having a more balanced life, which usually ends up being a happier life. So actually... You say women are smarter than men. Women are much smarter than men. We knew that, John. <laughs> because the man is more willing to travel, work a dangerous job, sacrifice his, his family life for work, women are more, round, more grounded and well-rounded. Yeah, I mean, people pay for what they need, and men go into the hazardous jobs that are likely to pay more given the amount of education they have. They're more likely to work um, extra week, weekends, travel Martha, what do you say about that? I think uh, Mr. Farrell's data are bogus. Everybody agrees that even in female-dominated jobs like nursing and teaching, men make more. Uh, I just read a study before I came on the air by the American Bar Association, full partners in law firms. There is a huge gender pay gap. Warren, the nurses are, are getting ripped off. 
Well, uh, nurses might be, but if you, but it helps to know that a nurse anesthetist earns about 125,000 to 150,000 a year. If you are a nurse, you earn much less than that. So let's teach our daughters the specializations they can enter where they can out earn men rather than have. But you're all saying this the the girls are dumb and they could make more money and they foolishly choose art history not knowing it'll pay less. Well, if the, if they are taught only about discrimination. And they're not taught about how unlikely they are to get a job if they're a French literature or an art history major, um, and they only care about fulfillment, we, we have to teach both our daughters and our sons trade-offs. Um, if you want fulfillment, you'll get fulfillment. And when you do studies of women business owners, women business owners who have MBAs make only 49% of what male business owners make. Sexism. And, and we would think it was sexism until we ask what the, the women business owners what you want. And the women business owners say, I want flexibility. I want to be my own boss. I want to be close to home. Martha, what about that? You women are smarter and make better life choices. You know, work yourself to death. Well, Mr. Farrell has said that motherhood is punished uh, because that's a choice women make. Well, he's got a point, but he didn't tell us the other half. And that is being a father and being married actually helps men in the workplace. It punishes women. We have a lot of data that shows that the employer looks at that woman, even if she's not married yet, and thinks of her as a potential mother. So maybe I better not hire her, maybe I better not pay quite as much. Uh, certainly don't want to promote her because she might get pregnant, drop out of the workforce. And so well, the data she might. He is sorry. Is, is the employer foolish well, so to work? Worry about that? So might he be? Well, that's because the culture and our society punishes women for being mothers. There's no organized childcare, for example. When women make about a hundred or so thousand dollars a year, they start asking a different set of questions. Many women say, "What do I want out of my life? Do I want to make two hundred thousand a year, or do I want more personal time? Do I want more time with my children? Do I want more time at the gym? Do I want more spiritual time? Do I want more time with my with my spouse?" And women Women are more likely to say, I want a balanced life. And so they don't go to the very highest level because they're not stupid. Um, but you're saying they're making a choice. Okay, <laughs> Warren, thank you. Martha, thank you. We won't solve this here. Recently, Sheryl Sandberg, the chief operating officer of Facebook, wrote a book called Lean In, and she got attention for saying things like this. Just a couple weeks ago at Facebook, we hosted a very senior government official, and then he had these two women who were traveling with him who were pretty senior in his department, and I kind of said to them, sit at the table, come on, sit at the table, and they sat on the side of the room. Some feminists were angry about what she said and about other, th other things in her book. Sandberg puts the social justice-based feminist movement at risk, said one leftist who was upset about uh, Sandberg not agreeing that women are victims of men and corporations. They say sexist society holds women back, not the way women act. But Sandberg's book did become a number one bestseller. Does she have a point? Yes, says Sabrina Schaefer of the Independent Women's Forum. So go take it away. Yeah, I thought Sandberg offered a very thoughtful assessment of women in the workplace. She did not initially lament workplace culture as sexist. She did not offer public policy prescriptions. She just gave sort of nuts and bolts suggestions to women who have uh, you know, high aspirations and uh, you know, strong career path aspirations and said, here are some real things that you can do to better yourself. It was sort of a self-help style But women style need feminism. to be told if they want to advance in the company to take a seat at the table? Well, actually, yes. The fact is that Samber picks up on some very sensitive gender differences, that men and women are different. And the more that we can sort of recognize and accept those differences, the better we are. So she says, look, women don't negotiate their salaries. I was one of those women. My brother told me he negotiated Negotiated every salary he had. The fact is, once you're so aware of that, you can do things. So women are timid. No, I don't not think Not the women timid. I know. <laughs> but there may be ways that we're not thinking about asserting ourselves in the workplace that we could do more of. Why were women on the left so angry about her book? Right. I think that they realize now that a lot of the battles that they're fighting have been won. Women are outpacing men educationally, outpacing men professionally. Um, there's, after a while, sort of a big sigh. Really, are we still having this conversation? Yeah, and you live longer than we do. You're getting all the breaks. <laughs> I know. But there's one place I agree. I agree with some of the feminists. 
I think that Sandberg is a little bit out of touch, and here's why. I don't think that most women want what Sheryl Sandberg wants. If you look at some recent studies, only 23% of women said that they would prefer to work full time, let alone sort of a CEO quality of life that, that Sheryl Sandberg is living. So I think if you ask most women, as Warren just suggested, most women want some kind of balance. They're in making their life. a choice, and that's Absolutely. why. Is, are, are, did you make a choice? Are you earning less because you made a choice? Wow, major nods there.